So these are totes or IBCs, intermediate bulk carriers. Uh, we call them bidon in French, means containers. Uh, tomorrow I'm going up to Normandy to a beekeeper who is organizing a big delivery. So these four are gonna be filled. So these are the 600 litre ones uh, that will, when they're filled, the syrup will weigh approximately 900 kilos each. So obviously they'll never be stacked like that and I'll need a pallet um, unloader to unload them from my truck when I bring them back. But the other problem is my truck can only take two at once fully loaded. So it's 1. Uh, 1.8 tons, which is on the limit of its transport technically. But we we'll just about get away with that usually. And I'll drive, it takes me about an hour to get back. So I'll have these four filled with syrup and that usually does me for the whole year. And if I have to use bags of sugar at the end. So the liquid syrup we're getting this time is a very high concentration liquid. I can dilute it down if I want to, which actually I like to do that when I add my thymol solution, because you need water in it to accept the thymol. So um, it's a company called Happy Floor, and I'll show you the picture now of the constituents of the mix. There you go. And you'll see it's got a lower saccharose, which I wasn't very happy about, but it's got a good fructose content and quite a few other things that they say is a really good bee feed. So I'm gonna try this one. I think we're, I'll tell you the price. I can put the price up here now. I'm paying per kilo. It's not cheap, but everything's expensive at the moment and I need syrup for next year. So I'm gonna to have to invest in that. And my pollination contract that I had for last year should pay for this syrup and a little bit more hopefully spare at the end of it because this is going to be about it's expensive but you need it you have to feed your bees when they need it so that's tomorrow today I am going out now to put on the first supers because I want to come back afterwards. I've got a load of supers here, some frames to take out any partitions. The truck is completely loaded and ready. So I'm going to be going and taking my empty frames to put them on hives. The first one's going out, but the weather is pretty atrocious. It's dry today mostly and it's fairly calm. So this is why I don't mind bothering my bees too much today. Um, you can see it's almost a little bit bright at the moment, a bit of brightness up there, but generally it's cloudy, overclassed, and um, not very favorable. It's cold, it's about eight degrees, nine degrees, but I've, I figure that if I can just disturb my bees for a very small amount of time, to get that super on, it's well worth doing it today because at least if I can get 60 or 80 supers out and on today, that's colonies with space so that next week, if it does erupt and goes crazy, I'm a little bit more ahead of the game than I thought I would be. I mean, let's just show you this. This is the rapeseed now that's coming into full flower and the weather forecast is just pants. So there you go, look at that. Almost blindingly yellow, not quite. But when that sun comes out, it will be pretty blindingly yellow. So that roof is on. I've got to finish the back, fix the guttering to the front and trim this edge off here. I still haven't finished everything, but it's going to have to wait. I've got to also pressure wash those frames. They've got to be done and clean. So in that respect, I can then pressure wash the rest of the slab and get that done. But uh, you can kind of see at the moment, everything is pulling from every direction and there's just no time to do anything. But I'm prioritizing today. I am gonna put hives on. Those hives are gonna be cleaned out and used and they're gonna, I'm not gonna use the ones I've got in storage yet. They're gonna be used first. They're just gonna have frames put in them 
and we're going to transfer those nukes into them during the next few days even if the weather's crap i'm going to try and do that because that's a really good way of using your time wisely to make sure that at least your bees have got space to grow and everything is proceeding as much as is normal and possible so i'm off out now off out to the apiary i'm going to go to the slope one first because that's the one that's got the strongest colonies at the moment and the best chance of making some spring honey some serious amount of spring honey and the bees are really good there and i don't want to halt them in the slightest i don't want to halt any of my bees i don't want them to get honey bound but i figured if i get these supers on there first that frees up the other places and if it rains a lot which is supposed to i then can at least I know that that has been got to the apiary and I can then um, carry on in the best way possible and hopefully continue with the other ones because then those apiaries are more accessible. So on we go. It's funny, I spend most of my time when I'm in my truck yapping to a lot of my friends because that's the only time I can really stop and concentrate. But one thing I have got is a pair of um, ear pods, which means I can put my phone down and walk around and be fairly free around the whole apiary. Um, and then I find that works really well. Hands free and all the rest of it. Last Saturday, or Saturday, last Saturday night, last Saturday night, it did a live presentation with Griff from Gwyn and Griffith Honey, which was great, where they do beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and they do reviews as well, which was good fun. And uh, it was great to do that, and I'm looking forward to do that myself when we finally get our fiber optic connected but we're hopeful within the next couple of weeks we'll have an appointment with a technician who will connect us up so just putting the supers on going really well just wanted to show you this remember the other day i was putting in the foundation some colonies had one some colonies had two this was literally three days ago i think or four days ago show you some puffing up Look at that, puffed up, one-handed, nectar in it already, built out. I mean, doesn't that just show you what decompression is? Ready there for the queen to lay in the middle. She's not laying into this yet, but um, <laughs> pretty impressive, eh? Fantastic. The other side, this is the furthest one out. See if I can get this one out without squishing too many bees. I don't think they've drawn this one up quite as much, but yeah, pretty much. That's drawn up as well. Just shows you what these bees are setting out to do this time of year. Absolutely brilliant. So we know that they're on the build now. We know there's enough numbers of wax builders. You can see what they had in the top of the super before. I've just had to bang those bees out so that when I flip this top over, there's not a problem. But super on now. We can go straight up into the super and get to work cleaning out, rebuilding those frames. Just want to get all the bees down before I put the super on. Clean it up a little bit. Check all the frames are in the right place and we're away. That's so good to see that, that all these bees are drawing up. There's drone comb there on those frames. New eggs will be laid in there soon, but this is what I want to see. But I'm going to have to come back as soon as the weather gets better and I've got all the supers on to start my spring checks because this is the time that they're going to start making queen cells. Bring it on. So, amazing start. We got to the apiary. All the supers are on, the first apiary. And I still got plenty enough to do the next apiary in the back of the truck. And it was drying here. So I know this apiary is done. The highs are looking brilliant. As you saw, those frames have been pulled already, but now the bees have got room if they want to go up. 
So now I'm into the spring management of queen checks. This will be written down in my big diary at home and I'll put the first one on the board as to what we did here. That's the hive here that is drone laying. So that was given a frame of brew the other day when I did my video here. But at least the other frames have all been drawn up and they've decompressed the colony a little bit. The moment we get any decent weather, I know the bees will be straight up in here and all will be good. So that there now can get on with their business. I can go and probably not have to worry about coming here for at least 10 days because unless the weather goes good, there's going to be no queen cells in here for a few days yet. So I've got a little bit of a breather here. I'll note that, as I said, and then I can go on to the next thing. But I'm going to try and get to the next apiary now. I've got um, probably just about enough supers to go around here without having to go back. And if I can do, I'm going to go back and get another load. So all is good. No rain yet, still dry. So the great news is I made it up this track. All through there is where the trees fell down this apron. They've been busy cleaning it out, but it was still really wet. And I made it to this apron, 19 out of 20 are alive. And I'm just going through this. So this one was double brooded last autumn because it was so strong and there was a flow on. Same with these ones. I just wanted to show you what the contents of the double brood are. So at the moment they were building and adding nectar but some of it was built last autumn. I didn't get a chance to take it off because I'm slack Harry, as they say. But this is the frames I put in as foundation and these are the frames they've drawn up. So my nukes this year will be getting some lovely drawn comb with honey in as a feed. Isn't that amazing? So I've had to shake the bees out of these obviously, but that's fine. I've got a lovely big colony here. And I'm going to put probably two supers on this one because I wanted to have plenty of room. But they've got two frames to build inside. They weren't congested. All the honey was at the top. It just shows you early supering. When they're ready, they will have plenty of room above to store the honey if they bring it in early. Anything they bring in. That now is a complete unit to take home and stack. And I can use that to make up nukes this spring. Boy, have I got a lot of work potentially to do. It's all great news, but the workload is increasing all the time. Look at that drawn comb. That, that, that frame is worth its weight in gold. You can't buy that drawn comb, to be honest. But all these are alive. I've got to take all these top boxes. They're all good. They're hardly flying today because the weather's crap, but I'm here anyway doing it and adding supers after I've checked them and done their spring inspection. So all is good. Wow, man, this is brilliant. My goodness, this reminds me of cell building in the summer. These double broods, they've built up so much, but the only one, they, they've even drawn that up. But look at the honey in here. Every single one has been added to. There's obviously a good nectar coming in there, and I'm glad I'm gonna replace this with two supers. I mean, that's just uh, fantastic. The one next door, exactly the same. For the end of March, this is like, wow. So that's got two supers on. That's gonna have two supers on. I think that one's really strong as well. Even the one next door is strong. They're all strong. A couple are slightly, just literally some that are slightly less, but I've got them in time. All the others could have done with something earlier this week. In other words, like last weekend. But I can't moan. This is a fantastic situation to be in. 18 out of 20 alive here, not, ni not 19. There's one less I found. So I didn't realize that one had gone, but it's been robbed out, that's why. But pretty good. Nearly finished here. These two to do, and I'm going back home to take off all that honey, offload all these partitions, get some more supers, and trying to go to a third apiary if I can, if it stays dry. And I'll be so pleased to get that done, I tell you. Just amazing to have double brooded this. It's come through the winter. They've drawn up the full eight frames. I had two partitions in and look at it now, mega. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at this. See where the brood is, maybe take some honey out of this to give it a little bit more breathing space. But if it's got brood, on everything, which I think it probably has. The one next door was nine frames of brood. So I put two supers on that. That's the one next door. It's 
not a very good way of getting frames out, but. So that is honey, that's fine. Okay. And no eggs yet. So that one can come out. That'll decompress the colony a bit. Let's have a look, see where the brood starts. Massive. Honey. That's the pollen frame, that can go one back, so the brood starts there. Look at this, sheets of brood. I'm not gonna go any further that side, but that is where my foundation will go. And I'll put one this side when I found out where the brood is here. Just want to keep giving space where I can, see if I can keep on top of the swarming this year. If not, we're going to need good set of ladders because they're going to be in use all the time. So that's a frame of pollen and a frame of pollen on that side. That isn't a queen cell, that's an old one an old knobbly bit. I'm going to take that out as well. See where, oh, there's brood on the next frame. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six frames of brood. And I'm going to give it some more foundation as well so they can draw on that. Just mega colonies. For this time of year, it's incredible. Didn't have time to get that third apiary done that day. That was Tuesday this week. But I did come back because I had to unload all that honey and get it into storage on a pallet and we've got covered it over. Uh, so that's at the back of the honey house now, but that will go into nukes this year when I make nukes up. So it's a great source of feed and it's a way of actually also using frames and getting new frames into colonies as well. So there's many ways you can see of rotating those frames out and that's kind of overall how I do mine. So uh, Tuesday night I came back and I had to uh, offload the whole truck because yesterday also I drove up to get uh, the syrup, which I mentioned. Um, there's a little bit of video of me just after we've loaded up. You can see how windy it is and the weather is just pants right now. So that's the syrup collected at the Rusha de Bader and also Michelle. A couple of guys left now, just about to go. All my syrup's loaded up. Windy as hell, crappy weather. Well strapped on there, it ain't going anywhere. Off we go home. This is the first load, I've got two more to collect after. So I'm quite pleased with that. Off we go, an hour's drive home. Yesterday came and went and I managed to get the second, collect the second load of syrup. So that's going to be unloaded today by the farmer as well. The first one unloaded yesterday. That's put away now. Over here. Just temporarily. But they might go up somewhere else afterwards. I'm not sure where yet. But uh, really pleased to get that syrup back here. Even though it's cost a fortune, I have good bee syrup now to use. So yeah, we've got the racking done. That's filling up fast and we've got other stuff to go on at a later date. Just come down this morning just to show the end result of getting this syrup, but the weather is absolutely atrocious. We've got this huge Atlantic low stationary over Ireland at the moment, and it's blowing north northwesterlies to us. Loads of rain, heavy rain showers. The, the flowers are getting hammered. I can't get out to do the bees, nor can anybody, I don't think. So um, it's all a bit grim in that respect but we're just gonna hope that we get a better period in a couple of weeks. There's still a good amount of time to get a good spring crop, um, but the clock is ticking. So this will be unloaded this morning and then my truck is free again um, to do the next thing. But as I said, these are super heavy. So um, I've been, I was looking at this before, I'm looking at getting what we call a trans pallet, electric trans pallet which will, uh, which is, we actually call a, a, a gerber or gerber here, which means I can basically move stuff from the top of the pallet down from the floor up 
and I'll be able to reach about three and a half to four meters. I'm not sure which model I'm going to get yet because it's expensive. But the whole plan was that when the mezzanine is in, that stretches down this side, sorry, down that side there, when the mezzanine is in, that will be the piece of equipment that will enable me to raise and lower stuff that's heavy. So just working that out now, what the best options are. There's secondhand stuff around. It, if I knew I could get a small electric forklift that just did three or four meters high, that wasn't fancy, that was reliable, that was someone had had in their, in their workshop or garage that, you know, for a few grand, I get it. But the problem is you just don't know what you're buying these days. I've gone to a secondhand dealership um, to discuss this as well. They, like one of the companies that do manual handling equipment here, a well-known company. And for instance, they are struggling to even get the secondhand gear turned around in two to three months because they've just got such a waiting list. There's just, so if you buy new, you've got to wait like four to five months to get the kit here. If you get secondhand, you've got to wait two to three months and then it's secondhand, but at least then it's guaranteed. Whereas if you go to someone else, you don't know what you're buying. I know you can have a pretty good idea by obviously driving it yourself and you can look at the valves and feel it's not loose, stuff like that. Get a feel for the machine and see it's in general good condition, but you just never know. But I suppose that's what you could say with many things. Um, we all learn by uh, purchasing something that you think is fine. At the end of the day, the problem is when you're dealing with weights of up to a tonne and around the, the 1.2 tonne mark, which is what I'm looking at for capacity, it's a completely different ball game, and you've got to really be careful that you get something that is safe uh, and that is completely designed and built with modern safety features in you know I'm in, I'm in a lovely workshop now i've got everything else i need but i've just got to be sure that i just finish that off well so watch this space i'm going to um be looking at that in the next couple of videos but at least today uh i'm back at home doing paperwork i've got a mountain of stuff i might as well just get on to do my accountant shouting at me asking for my paperwork for last year back in which I've nearly got ready but I just kind of finish it off so I'll get that done while the weather's absolutely crap and the weather as I said is dire so I'm going to get the inside jobs down and a bit of stuff in here but um, knocking out those jobs today is more important if the farmer turns up with his loader great then we are clear and we can say that that job getting the syrup in was a great investment in time because yesterday the weather actually wasn't too bad driving back it's a long way there and back but worth it because it's done everything went well you know you've got to push the limit sometimes uh, and i feel i did that yesterday again and then coming back if i could unload myself getting back to that loader issue it would make me completely independent wherever i get my syrup from but uh, uh with also with pallets so um that's another thing to look into anyway whatever you're doing have a good rest of the week um i'll be back in touch shortly take care bye for now